So in this course, we've been looking at different ways in which you can use JShell to write Java programs and uh, kind of use it as a substitute to a full-blown IDE. You can run programs quickly, you can run expressions quickly and build stuff with your Java syntax, with your Java code that doesn't really require uh, setting up an IDE and saving files in, as Java files, compiling and all that stuff. But there's one important aspect of Java development that we haven't seen so far, uh, which is using external libraries. So far, we've just been using the core Java APIs and our own code in order to build something. What if you need to use external libraries? This is something that the IDEs make very easy to use, right? You can just uh, use a Maven project, you can import jar files, and you know they're there, they magically show up in the class path. This is where JShell kind of falters a little bit, not too much. You can still use external libraries in JShell, but it's not as convenient as an IDE. So again, you have to think about the promise of JShell being something that you can quickly prototype and quickly experiment with. So if you're using a library, it's probably gonna be a small library that you're playing around with, right? You don't wanna be using like a framework and building something really big and a big application in JShell. So for small kind of prototyping, you're probably gonna be looking at one or two libraries. Uh, in this tutorial, I will show you how to write your Java code inside JShell using external library, third-party library, which you get as jar files. How do you do that? So I'm gonna start my JShell session here, and uh, I am going to write a program which uses the Apache Commons library. That's everybody's favorite third-party library. So here is the Apache Commons uh, website, and I'm gonna be trying out the Commons Collections uh, library. Now let's say you're new to a Commons collection and uh, you want to try out what, what are the APIs that are available here. If you were using a full-blown ID, what you would need to do is create like a Maven project or a new Eclipse project or a NetBeans project and then add this as a dependency and then use it. But now we're going to be trying all this out using just JShell, okay? The first thing you need to do is download the jars because well, you need the jars in order to be using it. So I'm going to click on this dart zip and uh, I'm going to, let me actually open this here. Now I've extracted that jar, uh, the download, and placed it in the C colon Java folder, which is where I've uh, kept my JDK as well. So here's my commons collection, which I've downloaded. This contains the jar, and uh, I've put it in this location, but really the location doesn't matter. You need to remember what the path is so that you can tell JShell where this jar resides. So I'm gonna open a new JShell session here. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is set that jar location into the class path, all right? So I need to tell JShell to add those jars into the class path so that I can use the classes that are in those jars. Now, how do I do that? I do that by using a JShell command called slash env, all right? And it takes in an argument, dash dash class dash path. As you can imagine, slash env is a command which lets you set the environment, and one of the environment properties is the class path. Now the class path that I need to give is the relative directory to this commons collection, commons collection 4-4.2.jars. Now what's the relative path here? So I'm currently on the JDK bin directory, right? This is where JShell is. You see this? I'm on the JDK slash bin. Now I need to go two levels up, and then I need to go to the commons collection, directory and then go to the jar. So this is the path. I go two levels up, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, and then I go to the commons collection directory and then inside that I have the commons collection jar. So when I hit enter, uh, what JShell is gonna do is it's gonna set this option for the environment and it is going to make the jar over here added to the class path. So the classes in the jar are available to me to use in my program. Now what I'm gonna do is use one of those classes, which is the bag. So there is a bag interface and a bag implementation in the commons collection. You don't see this in the collections API in JDK. So the bag collection basically just uh, acts like a bag, kind of like a set, but it allows multiple copies. So here you see that you can add an element, uh, six copies of an element into the bag. You can remove two copies of an element from the bag and all that stuff, and you can get the count. So let's do that, I'm gonna import the go here. The package is arg apache commons collection four. All right, so I'm going to import that. It's very simple. Now that the jar is in the class path, I can import any of the classes in that jar by just typing import and then the package dot star. All right, so when I do this, 
all those classes are available to me. So I'm going to do a bag b equals new hash bag. Let me actually do the autocomplete. And for some reason, it does not show up. But let's see if we can get this to work. New hash bag. Hit enter. Well, hash bag doesn't exist. So I'm guessing hash bag is probably in a different package. So let's import that as well. Okay, so it's in the bag package. So we're going to have to import this as well. So I'm going to do import dot hash bag. I'm going to import the specific class that I'm looking for. And now if I do this, I am creating an instance of the class hash bag and I'm putting it into an interface called bag. And I can do b dot and then guess what? Autocomplete works now. I can press tab and here I see there is an add method. I'm going to do add, open parentheses, press tab. So here I have two options. I have an option to add an element and I have an option to add an element with a given count. So let's say I add foo and then uh, 10 copies of that string foo, hit enter. It gives me a warning about the unchecked call using the raw type, but we can ignore that for now for the purpose of this video. I'm going to add one more, um, let's say bar, and I'm going to add 20 copies of the string. And then I'm going to remove five copies of foo from this bag. So I think remove is a method. And then I'm going to foo. And then I'm going to remove five. So that gets removed. And now let's see if there is a way I can print out the contents. We have the get count method, which is going to give me the count of, of the object that I'm interested in. So in this case, let's see how many foo strings are left. Ideally, it should be five because we added 10 and removed five. And uh, bar should be, I think, 20. And it is 20. And uh, finally, I can do a for each. I believe there was a for each here. Yeah, there is a for each here. I can do a b dot for each, and I can do system out. Sorry about that. Out colon colon println, and uh, here you see all the instances of these strings getting printed. So this was a brief introduction to how you can import external libraries and use it in your JShell session. So what we did in this video was we got the Apache Collections library, put it somewhere in our, uh, you know, on our computer, and then imported the jar by providing a relative path uh, from where the command was executed. But we used the slash E and we set the class path to that particular jar, and then that jar was available to us. Then we could import whatever classes we needed from that library and use the APIs that come with that jar, right? So again, not as elegant as doing this in an IDE, but for the sake of experimentation, for the sake of prototyping, this will do the job. This will get you there, and you can use these uh, jars from external libraries in your class path in a GHL session.